you say this was a five-year plan that was generated five years ago? Um, this, recommended, <laughs> this recommendation was five years ago. We have since that time redone our strategic plan in the last year. So we're now on a 209-2013, and we did that, developed it through staff feasibility groups, and also did 10 uh, public meetings to get input there as well. And it was still on track to do something with the Franklin facility to make it um, more user friendly to offer more computer space, more meeting space. The the thing, if you get a chance to read this article, it talks about just how communities are coming to see together they can share spaces for meeting spaces for the type of um, programming that is kind of unique. And we're looking, as Fred mentioned it, you know, where are some really smart things that we could partner with. Um, we do a lot with extension services now, with maybe the law library. With we we partner already with the historical. Um, society and, and with the um, um, genealogy collection there. So those are some things we're looking at, and those are all in our new plan. The reason I brought this is because there's been a lot of questions about why did the library do what it did when it did it. It's a very slick, it is a progression, and hopefully this helps you a little bit understand that it wasn't just something, the board made the best decisions they could with the knowledge they had. You know, I shared with someone, I have, when I came into my job, there was a study there that said there'd be no growth in Franklin for 10 years. And obviously we know that just wasn't true. So it's, you, you take the knowledge you have and you try to make decisions and that's why we think this time, lesson learned, let's really study, let's really see where we're at before we go out to do this, this new project. Okay, so on, on, on your conclusions page here, are the square footage numbers that I'm looking at current thinking? Their current thinking, we will, as I said, um, in our lingo, we call it a program, but it's really kind of a needs assessment feasibility study that we'll go back and take a look. Trafalgar came in at 21,000. Uh, yes, the 90,000 gross is if we are to combine the library with administration. As you know, currently we have our administrative spaces. We pulled those out into a separate building, and then that makes it look more like a 70,000 square foot library. But we're going to go back and re-examine all that. See, when I drive by the Trafalgar Library, that's the largest building in Trafalgar. The thing is huge. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I get thanked daily for our vision that we know that community has already had three major changes because of that library. And, and I'm looking at 90,000 gross square feet in downtown Franklin. Where in the world could we put that? Are you talking about a skyscraper or what? I'm not talking about a skyscraper, but we're talking about something that hopefully would fit the whole downtown um, physique and, and look, so I'm definitely a two-story building. Is there room in downtown Franklin to put a 45,000 square foot footprint? We are seriously we looking, are looking at, at we, it. We, we believe there is, yes, we do. Are, are we talking about demoing an area or what? Um, that would probably have to be done. We'd hope to use some of the existing property, but, and as Fred says, we're working very closely on, we'd hope to not be responsible for building the garage. We'd hope that that, that parking need that we have, we're, we're being told for 90,000, it's about 365 parking spaces by your, by city ordinance. And that's where we just kept coming up against a, a buffer in the old site that we just couldn't find that amount of parking. Is, is, <coughs> is there some type of accepted formula for gauging the square footage? Yes. <coughs> Right, when you, do a pro, when you do a program, there are actually people that sort of do that professionally. They come in and they look at the population. Mo more of it is services that you're offering. You know, what are, what are the kind of, what are the materials, types of materials that take for shelving? What does it take for public meeting spaces? What does it take for computers? Everyone thinks, well, you know, we need less books. That's really not true because we're finding people are, are flocking to us from book materials, AV materials. But a computer just takes up more space. That's all there is to it. You've got to offer a little bit of, of private space. You've got to be able to get them apart. And that's where we are just bursting at the seams at Franklin. And we have people waiting all the time to use the computers. I mean, these numbers are, I mean, they, they just blew me away. I couldn't believe it. So it's going to be four and a half times bigger than the Trafalgar? That's only if we do administrative space. Again, the, the reality being that we are a county library system. And we are we are in Franklin because of history. Um, we we have administrative offices that take about 25, 20 to twenty five thousand off the ninety. So 
So this administrative, actually, like out of Franklin, will be running. You guys are running we're in all. The whole I'm, running yeah, all I'm in charge of the county system, except for the city of, of Edinburgh and the, and the city of Franklin are separate city workers. What increase in foot traffic do you expect? We've seen uh, a good 25 percent, and that's usually what you see in the numbers. Is that you know, and that's this article talks about that. That's what developers are seeing is the amount of foot traffic you see in the downtown area. What you start. Um, I've been visiting libraries. I just came back from Chicago, visited two where it, it brought a new. Uh, in one instance, it brought a new um, a condominium building. It brought um, new shops. It brought the city building right into the library complex. Uh, another where in De Plains, they're right off the um, the northern urban and um, the foot traffic they see going through there they said is is like up to I think it's like 5,000 people a day so I really you know I really do believe sincerely and I'm not just saying this because I think this is what we need to do but I do enough reading that I've been doing to say this is an anchor just like just like a retail space um, and and the studies show that more people are going to visit public buildings than are going to go visit real Space. I agree. After Indianapolis, I mean, that was a fiasco. We all read about that and watched that over the years. But after they get everything ironed out, it's a destination spot it's right now. Totally it's totally really done a lot for that particular yeah. section of yeah. downtown. Thank you. Hearing uh, what you said, uh, what kind of uh, projection do you have? How long will this one last? You know, I think when you wish built I had one a crystal ball. Years ago, uh, I, I know you don't have a crystal know, ball, but um, what kind of, in other words, you bought land thinking you could expand that one. What kind of safeguards you're going to put in that you don't get in the same? Well, I think you're going to. I think you're going to build. You're going to build something different than than what we built currently, okay. and that is with the, the the right footers and all that you can go up. Mm -hmm. Instead of we cannot build. Uh, we are literally just a bunch of timbers sitting on a concrete slab at the current building. So there's mm -hmm. no building up. There's no adding on. Um, that in the plans has to be long range. In my own estimate, you get much bigger than this. There are there are spaces that become manageable, and then after that, you have to start looking at a branch. You know that you just simply can't contain it all in one. If Franklin were to quadruple in size in the next 20 years, there'd be no doubt in my mind that there's going to have to be at least one or two branches. <coughs> like to see it like um, on a conclusion page again uh, third paragraph last sentence based on the current estimate the tax impact is manageable uh, I can we read get that. that yeah just to get an idea of the numbers that. so we can see numbers with the increase mm -hmm. would be because I noticed you know we're looking at five phases right now so we're looking at I know you say you're not going to use the whole 28 million for Franklin but I mean, and you can check the first two phases off. They're completed. Yeah, completed. And the bonds will be paid off at the end of this year for the, the Trip Founder project. Okay, so that means three that it has so to be funded leaves, for bonds. Right. And so what I'm passing out right now, again, is a sheet that Humbell prepared for us. This is a history of the library's taxing rate. Now, for those of you that you know have been at this as long as I have, understand that for those first years 96 to 202 that was when we were not using true market value for assessment so in 202 we did that sort of transfer year then we went down um, to 203 where we start looking at true market values and you can see that our rate has stayed right in a in an eight to ten cent arena we're predicting for this new bond that it will probably be four cents uh, we're paying off the current bond at two cents but I anticipate that our capital projects and our operating general fund will go down because our assessed value keeps growing. <coughs> now, as Fred's pointed out, we've got some issues with operating, and that's going to be the big issue. But we moved from, if I can share that, 9,900 square feet to 20,000 square feet, and we didn't add new staff within the organization. We've done it through attrition. We've done it through replanning, repositioning. And that would be the plan we'd have to have for this. We won't be able to add new staff. 